Namaste. I am Rishabh and in this episode we are going to discuss something really different and something which we don't really discuss on this channel. First of all, why is it different? It is because this is a very subjective topic. It differs from person to person, from listener to listener. It will differ for me, it will differ for you. And what is this topic? You might have guessed it from the title itself. Uh, it is the concept of Ras. Now Ras or Rasa, as some people may call it from the spelling, taken into the context of Indian classical music means the flavor, the essence of the composition or the bandish which the instrumentalist or the singer is uh, singing or playing. Now the way how the artist is portraying the composition and the way how it's perceived by you as the listener, as the connoisseur, as the rasik, the, a combination of all of these give rise to a certain emotion in the mind and the heart of the listener and that is called Ras. Now first of all, Ras is a very deep topic and we here on this channel are not here to get our undergraduate degrees in Indian classical music. We're just here to try and understand, you know, as listeners, as common listeners, to try and understand and appreciate what Indian classical music is all about. And Ras forms a very important and a very subjective part of it. Now adding just a little bit, a pinch of theory into this, Ras has been described in a book called Natya Shastra, which is a classical Indian text, and it describes many types of emotions and Ras, which the listener or the viewer may experience when he or she is listening or watching a performance. Keep in mind that this was also written for viewers of theatre, of various art forms, of dance. So it's not only limited to, you know, vocal or instrumental. It's for stage plays, it's for theatre, it's even for movies, it's for non-classical music, it's for dance. It's for all types of art forms that you see in front of you. Now the Natya Shastra describes eight types of Ras. The ninth one was added later, so it's called the Navras or the Nine Rasas, which are namely, I'm going to read it out, Shringar, Romance, Love, Hasya Ras, which is uh, comedy, laughter, Rodra Ras, Fury, Anger, Karunya Ras or Karuna Ras, which is uh, compassion, mercy, Bibhatsa Ras, Disgust, Bhayanak Ras, which is horror or terror, Veer Ras, which is of course bravery, courage, and Adbhut or Adbhutam, which is wonder or amazement. Now keep in mind that in the context of Indian classical music, we mainly use Karunya, which is compassion, mercy, a very common one, which is Shringar, love, Veer Ras, which is courage, Shantam or Shant Ras, which is peace, tranquility, which is the ninth Ras. And we sometimes use Hasya Ras, very rarely. Now this is the theory out of the way. Do we really need to know the names of these uh, emotions? Let's call them emotions. Not really, we don't need to. If you're a human being or otherwise, if listening to music evokes certain emotions within you, then you don't need to know the names of all these emotions because you are feeling them firsthand. You don't need me to tell you that you're feeling sad or that you're feeling happy. In fact, many experts say that the emotions that you feel on the day that you listen to a concert, the emotions of the rasas which are evoked in you when you listen to a concert or a recording on a certain day are actually influenced by the artist and by you. And moreover, according to them, the experts, it's also influenced by the kind of day that you've had. If you've had a good day at the office, you are bound to feel happier and more peaceful and vice versa if you've had a bad day. Now, why is this different? Why is this subjective? Because I can tell you or you can tell me that you know what? A mean is a glide or a glissando or a slide from one note to the other. So. Or a gamak would probably sound like So all of these you can point out and tell me But the emotion, the rus that someone is feeling or you are feeling I cannot ask you to feel happy or sad or compassionate or brave that is your first-hand emotion. And hence, this topic is very deep, it's very subjective, and it's very personal. It's very first-hand. Now, let's get to a couple of other topics, one or two other topics that I wanted to discuss. Do different rags. We'll discuss the concept of rags sometime in the future. But do different rags have their own emotions, have their own ethos, pathos, have their own ras? Most definitely, yes. Classical texts will tell you that each rag, each note, each combination of notes, so sa ma, sa pa, sa ni, on the tanpura, will evoke different emotions within you but more contemporary artists will tell you that different compositions within a single rag so different compositions of malkos different compositions of jonpuri will have their own ras some of them may have an underlying tone of shringar which is love and romance and some of them may have an underlying tone of bhakti ras which is devotional some of them may have viraha ras which is separation from someone's lover which is a subtype of shringar ras having said that Will certain compositions definitely evoke 
certain distinct emotions within you as the listener and me as the listener, separate people? Most probably the answer is yes. It doesn't matter if you or I listen to Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi sing Tirth Vithal, Shetra Vithal, which is a language which even I don't know, Marathi, and which is a language which probably you don't know. But when we listen to him sing this particular abhang or bhajan, 90% of the time, in 90% of the cases, I don't really know, it's just a random number, it's bound to evoke a devotional aspect, a devotional emotion, bhakti ras, within us, the listener. Secondly, is ras only evoked when you have lyrics to a composition, when it's just a bandish? Of course not. Vocalists sing taranas, which as we know do not really have legible lyrics, which have bowls like Nadir Dirdani, Tomdir Dirdani, and bowls from the Tabla and Pakhavaj, Dhitta, Kranda, all of these. They don't really have meaning, but they can evoke emotions within you as the listener. It does an artist who's playing the sitar or the violin or the sarod do their guts, do their compositions not evoke emotions within you? They most certainly do, and hence the concept of ras is not only limited to lyrics. If there's an artist performing an art form in front of you, he's bound to convey some emotion to you as the listener. He's bound to evoke some emotion firsthand within you as the listener. So that was my limited take on a very complex topic, on a very, not a complex topic, but a very deep topic like Russ or emotion, which is very personal, very firsthand. But I did try to, you know, explain it a little bit. From now on, we will also discuss the underlying mood, the tone or the rust of the compositions that we listen to on this channel. And not only the objective techniques like mead or gamak or khatka or murki. We'll also discuss the underlying emotion of the composition of the gath, of the bandish, whatever it is that we're listening to. So that is it for this episode. And I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, namaste.